Good morning, church. Hey, it is always nice to see you all here in the house of the Lord. My name is Watanak Hing. It is my privilege and honor to be your pastor. Friends, today is a good day again, a good day in this house of God together. We are here to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen to that? I also want to welcome friends who worship with us online, wherever you are, in your bedroom, in your living room. May God be with you. I pray that today's service will speak to you, that you will be encouraged, that you will be energe energetic, that you will be energized by the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, as we are here together, we worship God, we fellowship with one another, we just want to share life with one another, we just want to, you know, encourage one another and be, be there for each other. How about we just get up and go around and, you know, shake, uh, shake hands and say hi to one another, passing the peace of Christ to one another. Let's do that. Can we do that, please? All right. Let's say hi to one another. All right, I invite us all to come back to your seat. It's a great day, right? Hey, you are here. You know, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for spending your time here with us. Saturday, Sunday morning, you know, you could have done a lot of other good things. But you, you decide to come here to the house of God to worship God together. And so I pray that today's service will feed you. Today's service will, will give you all the things that you need. That you will leave this place, you're like, yes, I'm so very happy I decided to come to church today. God spoke to me, or, or I feel this, or, or my life is different, and that the world is different because I came to church. The world become a better place because I go out with the light of Christ, with the love of Christ. I go out as a messenger of God to bring peace, joy, and hope to the world. Amen? All right, so are you ready to worship? Yeah. Going to be great today, friends. Your scripture reading, the sermon that we will have today, the, the prayer that we will do together, the song that we will sing together, pay attention to it, every single part of it. I pray it is made just for you. Now I would like to invite our acolyte to come. The acolyte come down with the light of Christ, representing the spirit of God is with us all. Representing that the presence of God is right next to you, is in you, and that you will experience the power of God through this time today. When you are praying, when you are worshiping, don't take anything for granted. Everything is made just for you. I would like to invite our liturgist, Ruby, to come and lead us into this time of worship. Ruby? Good morning, church. Good morning also to our brothers and sisters worshiping online. Welcome to the best United Methodist Church. Yay! And for our visitors, welcome. We also welcome uh, Dr. Benarak Tarap and his wife who is here with us. And he led our leadership retreat this uh, yesterday. Welcome, Dr. Benair. And last week, we heard about Jesus' death and resurrection. And we know that his, uh, the power of Jesus' death on the cross transformed us. And, this, and today, we will hear about God's lullaby. I hope that won't put us to sleep. And so, uh, I just want to share this with you. When I was on my way to work last week, I heard this old hymn uh, on Jesus' solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I thought that is so powerful. We are so fortunate that we are standing on a solid ground because of him. Aren't you lucky? Don't you feel lucky? Don't you feel fortunate? 
other ground is sinking sand. We're not sinking. We are standing on the solid ground. And with that note, I would like to hear joy stories from everyone. What God has done for you. Well, I would like to share with you. Yesterday, we had our leadership retreat, and that was facilitated by Dr. Benair Agtarab. And so we talk about the hows, the whys, why we are here. What is the purpose? What is the why of Memorial United Methodist Church? And the why is, what can we do? And the group came up with this why statement that we commit our heart burst and to, sh to show and tell God's love and to uplift our community. That was the group's uh, why from yesterday's retreat. And so it was a very good retreat. And I hope everybody was energized and uh, uh, inspired. And so thank you, Dr. Benair, for that. For our call to worship, please join me responsibly. Welcome to this community of faith. Seeking hope and courage for the future. Here you will find peace, hope, love, and joy. Weighed down by difficulties in our lives. Here you will find Jesus who will take your burdens on himself. Lord, we come to you this day in need of your mercy and love. Amen. If you are able, please rise for the opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture this morning is on Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. These are the words of God for the people of God. And I now invite the children to please come forward. All right, let us hear for our children. Wow, we got a lot of them today, quite a few. Sometimes they have to be with the uh, Sunday schools uh, on Sundays, especially when the parents are able to, to teach uh, them. And uh, also Hmong language ministry uh, meet at 11 o'clock and sometimes at 10 o'clock they meet either in the library, in the social hall, or in our youth house as well. And look at who they are today. Are they so beautiful children of God? Wow, you guys are amazing. Hey, friends, are you doing good? How is everybody doing today? Doing good, thumbs up? Not so good, sideways, or not too good, thumbs down. Everybody thumbs up? So that's good. I'm so happy that you, are, you all are doing good. Hey, today, the preacher, not me, Reverend Dr. Bene Akhtarab is going to preach about God's lullaby. What is lullaby? What is lullaby? Yeah. What do you think? What is lullaby? Hmm? A song, right? How does a song go? No, you don't know. How does a song go? Everybody, what does the, the, the lullaby song go? How does it go? Oh, sounds so good, huh? You, want, you guys want to go to sleep? Yeah? That's what mommy do, right, before you go to sleep? What, what else do you think give you comfort? I, I'm sorry, friends who worship with us online. You might not have heard the lullaby song that just sang, you know, because none of them sang with a microphone. And that is why I want to invite you to join us in person so you can see the real aspects of our church. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Right, everyone? Yeah, yeah. But, but friends, so... What does, what does mom or dad do to, to give you comfort? What do they do? Besides singing lullaby to you, what do you think they do? They give you a hug, okay. Or, yeah, Logan. Read the bedtime story, yeah, right? Maybe they take our a book, you know, children's Bible or, or story uh, book, right? They read you a bedtime story, right? What else, what else do you think they do? Maybe they play your music, right? And you feel so happy, you want to go to sleep. Not really. All right? Uh, oh, oh, maybe, what do you think? Maybe you look at the family picture, right? And you, you feel so loved, your family is so nice, you know, you, you cuddle and you, you go to sleep and you feel good, right? What else, what else do you think they, they, they do? Maybe they buy you McDonald's. Right? You go to sleep better. You don't, you don't feel hungry, right? You go to sleep. What do we have in here? A lot of napkins. My kid ate it all. Well, anyway. Or, or maybe you have your stuffed animal, right? You love your stuffed animal too, right? Oh, what else? What else do you think? 
I just brought everything in my office to bring it to you. Maybe they bring you flowers. You think it's cute? It's nice? Well, anyway, you know, just want to remember. I just want you to remember. I just want you to know that you, as much as your parent loves you, as much as your parents want to comfort you, whenever, you know, whatever you go through life, you know, time of ha- sadness, times of happiness, God also loves you the same. God also wants to comfort you. God wants you to remember that He is always there for you. Okay? When you, when you think about life, when you go into life, you know, sometimes we are sad. Sometimes we feel like lonely. Sometimes we feel like nobody wants to talk to us. You know, sometimes we go to cafeteria at school and then uh, we, we don't have anybody to eat with. Right? Sometimes we go to the playground and then people don't want to play with us. You know, sometimes we feel down, feel sad. Remember, you are not alone. God is there for you. God wants to comfort you. God wants to love you as much as you think he can give to you. Okay? So be thankful. Remember that God is always with you. And friends, I would like to invite us all to, to pray for our children. As they are growing up, as they continue to grow in front of your eyes, may God wisdom, may God's love, God comfort be with them all the time. All right? Let's pray for them. Lord Jesus, we love you so much, and we, we thank you for bringing children among us all today. May your love continue to be with them, your guidance and your teaching and your comfort. Be with them wherever they are. Lord, be with their parents as well. Give them the energy and the wisdom that they need so that they can help to, to raise all these wonderful children uh, uh, with the best of their ability so that these children will become the world changer, will become the agent of love, will become good and faithful disciples for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, let's do this together. You know, our, our, our adults here, they love us so much. We want to tell them too that I love you, Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Can you say it with me? All right? One, two, three. I love you, Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Hey, don't you like that? Let's give them a big round of applause. Hey, how about you say that back to them? All right, say that back to them. One, two, three. I love you, Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, thank you so much. You may go back to your seat. You know, like I always said, isn't it always nice to know that you are loved, that your church member loves you, that God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it, right? And so, friends, today I would like to invite you to really pay attention. Today, a message is brought from afar. Reverend Dr. Bani Akhtarab is going to come to us and help us understand what God lullaby is all about. So, with the spirit of Clovis Memorial United Methodist Church, can you please give him a big round of applause, hey? That's good. Reverend Dr. Bani Akhtarab. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Batanak. Good morning, everyone. You know, I, I have to say that I forgot to uh, say that you should ask your people to bring their pillows and the blanket uh, this morning. <laughs> because we're going to talk about God's lullaby. And I'm so excited to be with you this morning. This thing is still falling apart, so let me fix this. Um, and those of you who are joining us uh, online in spirit and in truth, welcome to our worship service. And uh, again, as I've said, I, we are so excited to be with you. Yesterday, we spent the whole day, not the, exactly the whole day, but good number of hours with your church leadership team. And we kind of talk about the why and the what and the how of, of your work as a congregation in this wonderful place, in this wonderful time in the season of Christianity in our, world, in our world today. And so based on that conversation yesterday, we kind of, you know, received the, the new sense of God's spirits amongst us uh, through this congregation. I thought that I will continue to share that thought with this congregation as we think about what is God asking us to do and to be 
in our time today as a congregation, both individually and collectively. And I would like to invite your attention to this. I think the starting point for us to really capture the essence of God's presence in our lives is to put to sleep. <laughs> to listen to God and let our body, our spirit, our mind, our whole being to put to sleep, to rest, to lie down in green pastures with God on our side. So let us pray. Dear God, we pray that uh, through our meditation of your word and the meditations of our individual and collective hearts, that we will indeed listen and receive your message this morning. Put us to sleep, a place of full recognition of your presence in our lives, not only today, but in the days to come. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray all these things, and the people of God say, Amen, Amen. Well, let me tell you a part of our time this summer, my wife and I spent almost more than two months with our grand, two beautiful granddaughters in Kentucky. One is four year old, her name is Eliana, and one is just turned one year old in August, her name is Alea. All right? Their second name, they all get it from their grandma. You know, I'm so, I'm so what's called that? Jealous. Because she got all this, the middle name. I didn't get any middle name apart of their names, but that's okay. I still had two children that may somehow, someday, will bring me another grandchild or grandchildren. So I'm hoping that my second, their second name will be my name. Anyway, that's beside the point. But the highlight of our time together, I don't know if you're aware that for the Filipino, uh, we have a, uh, a Tagalog term, the Tagalog is a national language, for grandchildren or grandchild. Okay? And it's very easy. Don't worry. If you are not non-Tagalog speaking, you don't, don't, don't worry, you don't have nothing to worry. The word is only three letters. A, P, O. Or say it, Apo. Okay, can you say it together? Apo. Okay, Apo. All right. So when we go out to be with our granddaughters or grandchildren, we always say, somebody will call, the pastor will call, hey, Pastor Benera, I need you to lead a Bible study. No, I'm busy. Because I'm with my granddaughters, I'm performing my apostolic ministry. <laughs> How about that? Do you like that? Okay. So we call it apostolic ministry, meaning taking care of our grandchildren. You know, it's fun to be with grandchildren. Amen? Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear? No. You, you can do it better, friends. Is it fun to be with your granddaughters and grandchildren? Yeah. Amen, right? Right. Well, playing with them is easy, but putting them to sleep is quite a challenge, right? You know, I have mixed feelings about the task of putting a baby to sleep. On the one hand, it tests my skills and patience, while on the other hand, it gives me unspeakable joy. In both instances, I rely on the power of singing lullabies. I don't know about you, you know, I Google it. What is the most popular lullaby uh, for babies? Anyone? rock by baby. You know that? There you go. Huh? No. They, they will put to sleep. I'll put them to sleep. Or they may get out from here. <laughs> so as a grandfather, you know, the thing about singing lullabies, I find it very, very helpful because every person can sing a lullaby. I believe that. Because you don't have to worry whether somebody's listening to you, whether you are out of tune. The baby doesn't care. Does it? The baby doesn't know whether you're singing it well or, or no, right? So just sing it. Just have fun. Um, but as a grandfather of two lovely little girls, Eliana and Elea, singing lullabies to them has been the highlight of my stay with them this summer, and I share this joy with my wife, Clarita, who is here with us today. So for me, singing lullaby not only helps put the baby to sleep, but also enhances my singing ability. You know, who knows? I may end up 
in an American Idol, you know, one of these days. But be with me for a moment. Just think about that. Put yourself on the side of the baby. And God is the one singing lullaby to you. You know, kidding aside, with all the craziness going on in the world, both near and far, natural disasters, we hear what happened in Maui, we just happened to hear somebody, an earthquake in Morocco, wars still going on in Ukraine and other places in the world, hunger remains number one problem of the world, even in our own city, right? Violence, crimes, inflation, oh my God, we just came back from Kentucky, the, the gas per, per gallon is 2.19, and I put gas on Costco the, yesterday, it was 4.85. Inflation is real and other similar challenges, many people find it hard to deal with all these challenges. And the problem is we bring it to our time, to our bedtime, when we go to sleep. We hear and see these problems all day long, and when it's bedtime, it is hard to get them out of our heads. And consciousness, am I right? Many people think of these things unconsciously, thinking about the trials and troubles through their dreams. So they are exhausted when they wake up. Do you know that sleeping disorders are common illnesses nowadays among many people, especially adults? It is a serious problem. Sleeping disorders is a serious illnesses that many people have to suffer nowadays. But the truth is, that each one of us has wounds that needs to be healed. We have our own pains, we have our own wounds that bothers our way of living. We have all suffered some time of injury, whether it be physically, spiritually, or mentally. We have all hurts, habits, and hang-ups with our lives, within our lives, that need restoration and hearing. So don't you agree that perhaps we, adults especially, and even children and young people, need God's lullaby? Don't you agree with me that in our bedtime, we invite God to sing a lullaby for us, to comfort our soul? and put us to rest and to sleep, so that when we woke up the following day, we are energized, we are a new person, we have a new set of vision, and the day is just so beautiful. Again, the scriptures in Psalms are lullabies. Psalm 23 is a beautiful God's lullaby. In verses 1 and 2, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Can we confidently claim that in our lives? That because we believe that the Lord is our shepherd, the following statement will be a statement of life and energy and hope, and we're moving forward with, with compassion, with, with commitment, with, with strength. That because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because God, who is my shepherd, makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. Now, the thing that I would like us to pick up at first is that God acknowledges the blessing of rest. God acknowledges the blessing of sleep, of rest, of knowing that God is with us a time to relax our body, mind, and soul. Remember, even God took a day off after a week-long work of creating the, the whole universe. So if God took a day off 
took a time of sleep and rest and restoration, God is inviting us to do the same thing. It is so comforting knowledge that God makes us lie down in grain pastures. It is so comforting promise of God that God leads us beside still waters. And when we mess up and make mistakes, God will still be there leading us in right paths. The psalmist says, I shall not want, not because I am great, not because I am knowledgeable, not because I figured out everything that I need to do. I shall not want is based solely on the fact that God is my shepherd. Another lullaby in the scripture is in Jeremiah 30, verse 17. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, God's lullaby in Jeremiah. It says, For I will restore health to you, and I will heal your wounds. Heal your wounds, says the Lord, because they have called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no one cares. Friends, our scripture today in Psalm and in Jeremiah is inviting us to carefully listen to God's lullaby and know that God is interested for our well-being. Now, let me ask you, can you recall a moment when you felt wholly aligned with God? Can you recall a moment in your life when you paid attention to God's lullaby in your life? Unfortunately, we often see God's people struggling to align with God consistently. We don't practice this listening to God's lullaby consistently, often only when we need it. When everything is okay, I don't care who's singing. I don't care who are you. I don't, I don't know. I don't recognize your voice, oh God. But when we are desperate, when we are in need, that's when we turn on the radio and listen to God's lullaby. You know, as I said, unfortunately, most of us, including myself, sometimes I don't align myself with God. Let me give you an example where we find ourselves doing that. When our words mismatch our actions. Did you hear that? When our words mismatch our actions, are we not out of alignment with God? As far as Jesus is concerned, if you say you love him, but don't take care of his people, of his sheep, then that is another example of misalignment. Are we kidding when we say we honor God yet disrespect our neighbors? Another example of disalignment. In Malachi 6, in the Bible, our acts of worship of God in the sanctuary like what we're doing now, and our acts of justice in the public square are to align with each other with no difference at all. So as we sing worship to God, we should always sing worship to God even when we are outside, when even we are in our, in, in our work of place. Wherever we are, we sing praises to God and we give honor to God. As Christ's disciples, do we take seriously this matter of alignment with God? And I believe, and my encouragement to you, my friends, is that in order for us to be consistent in aligning our lives with God, we spend intentionally a moment of listening with God's lullaby. We have to put that as part of our spiritual practice. In any scenario, my friends, in any aspects of our lives, my invitation for us all to consider a decision has to be made by each one of us. That decision is based on the scripture that says, let us commit our way to the Lord. Commit our way to the Lord. Because committing to God is a huge step towards positioning our life in agreement or alliance with God. You know, you know all of this, friends. The good news that God will act if we engage or align our way to the Lord. We do everything, and we should do everything in unison with God. 
God will act, and when God acts, everything is possible. Again, God sings lullaby, friends, every single day and moment of our lives. Again, the question is, are you, are we, listening or paying attention to God's lullaby? A couple of weeks ago, our group of leadership in the church went out uh, for a uh, dinner cruise in Daytona Beach, uh, Florida. You know, when, when, you, when you go to uh, an event like that of uh, church work, and then you go to Daytona, Florida, that's what we call, I'm sacrificing my life for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> because after Daytona, Florida, I went, we went straight with Ruby to Honolulu, Hawaii. Wow, really super hard life for Christ Jesus. Uh, but let me go back to the story of the cruise, the dinner cruise. As we boarded the ship, there was a drizzle of rain for a short period, which helped cool down the temperature. You know, the temperature in Florida was a little bit, you know, not, not, not uh, comfortable most of the time. But anyway, thank God, everybody found their, their table and seat and began enjoying everybody, everyone's company. You could hear people having good conversations with their friends. At our table, we told jokes to each other that generated waves of laughter. Then, the main course was ready to serve, which everyone had been anticipating. The food was excellent. Love that. Because most especially, I didn't pay for it. Somebody paid for it. So it's really excellent food, right? And the evening wheel was highlighted with another fabulous dessert uh, served amongst us. So everything seemed normal. The boat, the food, the table fellowship, the festivity appeared to be going so well. We were all adults. We were having a good time. Then something extraordinary happened that caught the attention of every person on the cruise. Twin dolphins emerged on the surface of the water. Have you, have you experienced that on, on a cruise? You know, it's all of a sudden, dolphins were there out there having a good time. These two beautiful animals graciously treated our group with graceful maneuvers on the water. They made themselves so evident that nobody could ignore their presence. I've never seen a group of adults be so eager to see dolphins in the water, including myself. You know, we're having a good time, we're eating, we're joking, and then these twin dolphins just interrupted the whole thing. Everybody got up, went to the side of the boat, picked up our, our, our phone, and took pictures, selfie, goopy, whatever you call it. <laughs> we had a great time. Everyone stood up from their seats to get a closer view of this extra treat of the evening. Many people took photos with the dolphins while they dance and jump as they are known to do with excellent skills. Their appearance did not last too long, but the joy it brought remained in the hearts of everyone on the ship. So again, my question to you, I told this story to ask you this question. Is it possible to not notice something so noticeable? Just think about that. Is it possible to not notice something so noticeable? God's lullaby happens every moment in our life. God is with us in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. God is with us here in our place of work, in the hospital, wherever we are, whatever the time of the day, God is evidently present in our life, singing lullaby. So noticeable. And yet, most often, we miss to notice God's presence in our lives. So when the dolphins emerged from the underneath the water, they captured our attention. 
We stopped everything we were doing at that time so we could see their lovely presence in our midst with much enthusiasm. But even when they decided to go back underneath and were no longer visible to us, we could still feel and know that they kept dancing in the water and singing along with us as we returned to the pier. They indeed made their presence known, bringing tremendous blessings to our group. That is what God's lullaby do in our lives. We don't see it. Maybe underneath. It may be somewhere else. And yet God keeps singing God's lullaby. Let me end. John chapter 1 Verse 14. This text is another beautiful lullaby because it says the word referring to God and Jesus Christ became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The God who created the whole universe, the Christ who died on the cross, made the decision to be amongst us and to dwell among us. And you know what? God will not be tired of singing God's lullaby. And I hope we will find a time to pay attention to that so that as we sing God's lullaby, we will be energized and we will continue to serve God faithfully in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.
Let us pray. Loving and merciful God, your grace is enough for us. Your love is enough for us. Your forgiveness is enough for us. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for all the things that you've done in our lives. Lord, thank you for being so present among us all. Lord, no matter what we are going through, we pray that we will be reminded about how you have been moving in our lives. Lord, may we continue to hear your lullaby, especially in time of need. Lord, may we continue to, to worship you, Lord, as we think about your love and everything you've done for us. Lord, here we pray for our friends and our loved ones. We heard about the people who, who were suffering earthquake in Morocco. We pray for victims who are suffering from the fire in Maui. Lord, we pray for those who are suffering from the consequence of war in, in different parts of the world, especially in, in Ukraine and Russia. Lord, we're praying for those who, who might be transitioning from one chapter of life into another. We just heard about our dear, beloved, church member who is moving into hospice care. Lord, we're praying for those who are traveling. Might be a first time traveling long trip, might be, uh, might be a, a, a mission trip that, that, that we need you to be among them. That your comfort will be with them. Lord, we pray for this wonderful church as we continue to live the mission you've given to us to devote a heart burst to go show and tell your love and to uplift our community. May we, may we get all the energies and the wisdom and the, the courage, all that we need so that we can fulfill this mission, this call among us all. Thank you, Jesus. You are amazing. In your name we pray. Amen. And friends, I thank you so much for your love, for your generosity. Now I invite you to give. To give to the ministry of our church. You, you can worship God through this time of offering. Because of what you've done, we can do the things that God has called us to do and to be. The great work of our, our thrift store, Today, they're going to bring $4,000 into our church so that the, 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 the offering can go to the mission of the world. And that's why we call it the Mission Thrift Store. I mean, there's a lot of people volunteer with, with the thrift store. Who are they? Donna, uh, Kendall, Georgia, uh, Becky, and, and Jim, Karen, who else? And, and Richard, and, and I forget your name. And Gloria, I'm so sorry. I love you. You know, and all, a lot of us, you know, working wholeheartedly for the mission of the world so that we can be a part of this world, so that we can be a part of the kingdom that God has given to us. Hey, to God be the glory. Let's give God a big round of applause, huh? Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your generous giving. You can also give online. Go to our church website or just aim your camera phone onto the QR code. You will be able to donate online as well. Okay? Thank you. Would you please stand? for a time of, uh, let's say, the, uh, let's say the, the offertory prayer together. These offerings we present to you, O Lord. May they be used for ministry of love and reconciliation through this community of faith. Amen. Let us now sing the doxology.
closing hymn, Love Divine, all excelling as we go and contemplate God's lullaby in all our lives as we go out. still standing please receive benediction friends as you leave this place remember the presence of God is always with you attuning your ear to God's lullaby because that is sometimes what you need the most in your life because that is sometimes that's what you need to go to sleep without having to worry about whatever gone through in life May the Spirit of God continue to breathe in you so that you will leave this place and be the disciples that God called you to do, to be, and to become. God is good. Awesome. And all the time, thank you so much, friend, for coming today. May God be with you, and I will see you all next week. Amen.